I am actually outside on the balcony of St George's Hall in Bradford. Today we shall be taking you up close and personal from within inside the building. Quite often you see images and videos from the outside. Absolutely glorious building. But this is thanks to uh, Bradford Theatres for allowing this video to happen. And shortly I shall be meeting Andrew Boltz and we shall be sharing some fun facts, some old rare articles and even talk about some of the personalities which I never knew actually came here. This vlog will be slightly longer than usual so do grab a, a cup of tea or a drink and uh, relax and enjoy the history of Bradford and this building and in a normal manner we shall be taking you guys to the resting place of a very influential person who had something to do with the origins of this building so sit back and enjoy okay so we've been extremely lucky uh, to be invited to come to st george's hall uh, and hopefully that everybody knows the place in uh, the center of bradford and what we're going to do is give you a uh, bradford through the lens tour to give you uh, an idea a little bit behind the scenes but also some of the history of st george's hall uh, from 1853 up to the present day so hopefully you'll see a few things that you've uh, may have never seen before but also some things you might recognize okay let's All go right. through so at the moment we're going into one of the bar areas and if you're waiting to go and see a performance obviously this is where you would get your drink first but uh, just to show you there you go st george's hall and that's 1853, the design, okay. And just by chance, it's from our famous friends, the architects Lockwood and Mawson, who designed Bradford Town Hall and the Wool Exchange, etc., etc. So there's quite a lot of buildings out there that these uh, chaps were involved with. But we owe thanks to this gentleman. Right, shall we get into the light there? Yeah, don't mind, let's, yeah. Uh, let's go where it's a little bit lighter. But, uh, yeah, that's a bit better, let's just... Yeah. So, this gentleman, uh, Samuel Smith. Now, he was Mayor of Bradford because there was no Lord Mayor at the time. That didn't come along until the 1900s. So, Mayor of Bradford from 1851 to 1854. He was also President of the Bradford Choral Society. And with his help, um, we have this magnificent building. Um, his um, resourcefulness at a time where Bradford was quite a grimy place uh, to uh, live, work, and the classes were it was either an upper class or a lower class. And he wanted a place where people could come uh, and see uh, musical performances uh, where it wasn't restricted. Whatever class you were, it was available to all. And what we have is this, this building. This is what was created from his vision. And as you can see, he was mayor at the time that uh, it opened as well. So if I just move on my... So in 1851, we can see on this, uh, Lockwood and Mawson were uh, asking for people to put tenders in for building it. So this was a, an official advert saying, you know, if you want to uh, put in a price, we'll uh, happily take you on to help construct it. And in 1853, again, probably can't read all this. We might have to put some inserts in later, but opened in 1853, um, St. George's Hall, reflects the highest credit on the public spirit of Bradford, distinguished by the name of St. George's Hall. Um, its beauty of its decorations, excellence of its arrangements. It was a fantastic building then, and it still is a fantastic building, hence why it had another renovation all these years since it was built. Just as a bit of amusement. So it's opened 1853, and then in 1854, I found this um, document in the newspaper, the very first reply to a complaint. 
somebody wasn't happy. Um, again, somebody uh, wasn't allowed to uh, obtain the seat that he'd secured on a reserved area of the West Gallery. So he put in an official complaint into the newspaper, which then the manager, uh, Charles Olivier, uh, had to write back to in the newspaper. Not like it is today where you uh, write personally back to somebody. Um, so yeah, he wasn't happy, but he got a, an official apology. He said right. it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Uh, little quirky bits, you know, yeah. real life. So they had some kind of uh, complaints department maybe some system in place i think no i think no. it's just the manager would have seen that and been horrified and that it appeared yeah panicked a bit fair enough because it's not a great advertisement right. <laughs> so yeah that that would have been responded to as, as quickly as possible and probably in the next week's yeah. newspaper yeah so um but interestingly this is where the history of the place takes a little bit of a dive because I was looking through this and it says it would be strange incident for some future historian of Bradford that's us too that in the year 1851 when the town of Bradford had reached its then highest point of wealth and importance the foundation stone of the magnificent music hall was laid by a peer of the realm surrounded by the municipal dignitaries and all the principal people of the town um, the occasion was one of the universal joy, the shops being closed, the whole population giving themselves a general holiday. Well, when you can continue reading this, it says, but then, after the short space of four years, this magnificent hall, the pride of its inhabitants and the envy of its neighbours, might be sold. So they're having problems, they're having debt problems. Right. Four years after it opened. Right. So there was a massive worry. So it says we may suppose that the historians might obviously tell us a different story here. So we are, because we know it's still here today. Yeah. But as you read on, one person put in the newspaper that there'd been a suggestion to convert it into a town hall. Oh, right, I see. Because across the street they'd just built some new offices and they thought that they could bring that area together. Hence why it, it's on the corner here, but the offices would have made it a perfect place for a town hall. Uh, also, um, they were worried that they'd gone from trying to get the masses in from um, sort of pubs and bars and all the seedy places to come in and enjoy real music that it might take a turn and go back to it more seedier times. They were worried that it might become a warehouse. Right. So a stuff warehouse. Um, there were also um, a casino. That was also put out as a, an option for the building. Um, but they were also worried that it would be a free and easy place of amusement um, with smoking, drinking, uh, and stage being occupied by semi-nude dancers and comic mm -hmm. singers. So they did have some moral standards in those days. They did. They right. didn't want it to go down the pan. Right. So it's quite interesting that you're seeing this dive yeah. from something that was so successful, the big launch and everything. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to see how it picks itself out of the, the gloom, if you like, because there's a, there's a different change, and from 1854, um, there was some top sort of acts of the time started yeah. to appear here. Hence, the popularity started to rise. Right. Now, I don't know if anybody knows this name. Charles Dickens. Mr. Charles Dickens, yes. Now, we all know Charles Dickens from uh, all his his books that he's done, uh, his famous one that we all know at Christmas time, The Christmas Carol. But he used to do tours of all the theatres around the country. And he actually came here in 1854 to uh, read on stage uh, The Christmas Carol. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. So yeah. he was, um, I do have a picture of him here of that time. Oops, so you can see Charles Dickens at that time, and he was uh, 
heralded quite a, the performer as he read yeah. out the book how, as it should have been read how, from, straight from his mind and words. So now then, this is the surprise element that we want to give everybody that's watching. So we're on the top floor now of uh, St George's Hall and as you've seen from the view uh, you can just make out Norfolk Gardens and the, uh, the back of City Hall. Um, car park uh, which is uh, partially starting to be demolished now but what we're going to do is take you through into the main auditorium into the concert hall and see if you get that feeling now the lighting is not particularly great so we're going to do as best uh, but I'm sure you'll get the wow factor okay and there you go now there's quite a few people that are watching this that have probably been here to see shows yeah. so they'll have experienced this but the ones that haven't you can see from this why it's worth coming here um, it's just magnificent and uh, has been magnificent since 1853 it, uh, it just shows you uh, what a gem the place is and uh, if you get that opportunity to see somebody that uh, somebody famous you know it's quite a, a personal place yeah. to come i found i've been here and seen people and you're almost on stage with them they are literally there in front of you so if it's um, a comedian a band it's really a great place to be up close and personal to you, your favorite on the acoustics are yeah. apparently really good as well here well i don't know if it picks it up on your camera but it's very echoey yeah it's lovely it's it's really yeah. good sound so whether it be a brass band a rock yeah. band everybody that's played here has always said what a fantastic venue it is yeah well while we're talking about events do drop us a comment we'd love to hear your thoughts your memories if you've been here who did you actually see on stage that's right yeah it's uh, we're only giving you a tour but you may have experienced something that you can share with everybody uh which obviously makes what we do more fun it's great to film it while it's empty as well, you know. Did you get a, a scale? I mean, when you look, right, when you look down, Ooh. yes. So you can see it's been set out. Uh, there was an actual um, event on uh, yesterday evening, so it's all laid out. So we have here, it says, uh, a shocking accident occurred at St George's Hall in Bradford. Um, and up here on the balcony so we go to this section here a girl drops 50 feet 50 feet now where we stood here i'm guessing we're more or less where she may have been and uh, obviously health and safety is in place now but back then there wouldn't have been as much yeah. um so i'm just looking now and 1908 it is 1908 90, 1908 yes. 1908 yeah um, she was actually called Alice, if I can find her name, Alice Donaldson, and she lived on Prospect Street in Bradford. Now she was a little bit of a tinker, according to uh, the articles, because she was here on her own, um, her parents didn't know, but um, this was at the time when this place became a cinema. So around about 1900 onwards, they were showing movies and she really liked them. So she ended up coming here. Yeah. And um, yeah, she, she, she shouldn't have been here. She was looking apparently for a penny that she'd dropped. Right. She'd leant forward and lost the balance and she disappeared all the way down there. Now, yes, she broken bones, things like that. But uh, I did a little bit more research because I wanted to make sure that we didn't have another trip to the cemetery because like we do on our other films, we yeah. end up at the cemetery all, all the time. And she did survive. She was fine. Good, good. Uh, obviously bruised, battered, broken bones, yeah. but she was okay. And later on in life, she did get married and all things happy. Uh, and in the 30s, she was actually a barmaid. So it right. just shows you that a life continued yeah, after this event. Yeah. 
So it sounds nasty. It was nasty. Yeah. But she she had a, a full life afterwards. I mean, to be honest, the amount of stories we've covered with freak accidents in the I past, know. these things happen, you know. But it's, it's down to health and safety at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, we were talking about this place being uh, divided between the rich and the poor. Yeah. And there was an entrance for the poor and an entrance for the rich. And up to a, a certain point, there wasn't even a fire escape for the poor people. It was a bit like Titanic. Right, I where see. Where you had the lower classes. So you might have been up here and not have a fire escape. Now there is, obviously. Yeah. But back then, it wasn't even thought about. No, no. So, yeah, it, it just shows you the, the class war that was still going yeah. on. It was a place for the people, but unfortunately, yeah. it still had a divide. Yeah. So, um, oh, hang on a sec, what's that? Oh, look, it's Alice's penny. I've just found it. Oh, so look. Yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> just put it under the light, let's have a... Shock. Is that an actual penny? It is an actual penny, yes. Uh, 1904, is it? Right, uh, yeah. What's on the other side? The king. Edward the... I don't know my kings very well. Seventh, I think. Wow, that's a great little find you've got there. Yeah, wow. Well, you see, you know, all these years... They come handy. Yeah. Don't spend it at once. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so... As we move on a little bit, I'm going to put this safe, by the way. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about, again, a few more. If we go back a little bit to, we've mentioned Charles Dickens. Yeah. Uh, on that, well, I won't say that very stage, because that stage is actually quite uh, bigger than it was originally. It would have been set quite a way back. Um, so then we had another famous visitor in 1857. The Reverend Dr. Livingston, I presume, as they say in the uh, the history books, the explorer, the African explorer, yeah. and he came. Um, there's a picture of him there. So he came to uh, give lectures on his adventures. Um, the real, real Indiana Jones, really, I Amazing. suppose, of the yeah. time. But uh, he would tell people. I mean, you, you talk about. Bradford has been a place where nobody ever left. They were always here working. And this man had been to all these exotic places. So uh, to pay you a penny to come in yeah. and listen to this well-travelled man yeah. must have been quite amazing, really. It's just legendary stuff, isn't it? Just yeah, legendary, it is, yeah. yeah. Now, interestingly, we talked earlier about <clears throat> the, uh, the partial decline uh, of the place um, where they thought that it was going to have to be sold. But I don't know if you've noticed now, we're starting to get more and more influential visitors. Yeah, yeah. So it's starting to pick up. Pick up. Yeah. But people were still saying in the newspaper, we should be limited the size of the place. So there were still concerns that there weren't enough people going. Uh, but you think of Livingston and... Um, our, our Charles Dickens bringing in the audiences. Yeah, yeah. So there was a moment there, there was a switch. Right. And you'll see that because as we go on, I mean, that's a, that's an image from when it was first opened. I mean, what strikes me there is the ceiling. Is that the same ceiling? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been renovated, yeah. Yeah, it's got that same sort of um, patterns on it, hasn't it? And in the distance, yeah. I don't know if you can see it on there, is the organ. Yeah. Now, at the moment, you can't see it because it's hidden behind the dark screen. But hopefully, we'll get to show you a bit more of that yeah. a bit later on. Um, so, we're moving to sort of 1861, and the acts are getting better and better and better. You've got everything from military concerts, uh, but then you get your stars of the time. Now, some people might know this name. We've got Madame Jenny Lind, and it says Goldschmidt's, okay? Now, Jenny Lind, there'll be a few people going, I know that name from somewhere. Now, Jenny Lind, there's a nice picture of her there. Jenny Lind. Now, she was said to have a voice of a nightingale. She was a very talented singer. But I don't know if you've ever seen the, the film Showman with Hugh Jackman and his, um, 
he fell madly in love with this singer. This is Jenny Lind. And she performs on stage in the big white dress and everything on the film. And yes, she was a real character, a real person, and she performed here. Brilliant. So, yeah, the um, P.T. Barnum didn't look anything like Hugh Jackman. I'd just like to yeah. point that out. But she's not so far off the, the looks of the lady that they used yeah. for the, the movie. Um, so again, we've got military bands, uh, Band of the Horse Guards, uh, His Majesty the King of Hanover's. We've also got um, the Second West Yorkshire Yeomanry Cavalry. They were performing. You can see how it's getting grander and grander. Yeah. If you think that stage would have been a lot smaller, but there'd been a massive band presence, military, all in Victorian uniform. Quite staggering, really, to, to watch, and quite loud. Yeah. There's no dumbing down the sound of a full military brass band. <laughs> True. Um, and then we always associate pantomimes being, obviously, with um, the Alhambra Theatre, but they had them here as well. Right. Okay. So they're obviously branching out into something new. So you've got Little Red Riding Hood in 1863. Again, it's all about looking at how they keep the place going. Yeah. You know, you can see it building up. Um, we're also having bazaars, a grand bazaar for raising finances. So for uh, this was for the Bradford Female Educational Institute, but also they would do them for local hospitals, things like that. It was all about raising money. So it had another purpose. Um, this is a, one of those subjects which I know that we've had Black History Month recently. Yeah. And there used to be um, touring troops of minstrels. So uh, obviously black uh, singers, performers that used to come. Um, but these were people, um, let me just have a look. So for example, Haig's Minstrels, the original slave troupe. So what you've got to think is, yes, they were slaves, but they are now embarking on their lives. So these people were brought on tours because of their talents of singing and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, these were free people that were now um, introduced into American universities, things like that. So they had their own singing groups. Yeah. And then they were brought around different venues to perform. I mean, you can see there um, 40 artists, six comedians. Yeah, it's all, all the things that they were really, undoubtedly the greatest combination of minstrel talent in the world. These were very talented yeah. black people and it had been recognized, so they were performing. Yeah. It would have been unheard of. You know, people sat here would come to see uh, black, black performers. Yeah. And it's yeah. a proper setup as well. Yeah, yeah. It's not, from what I can tell, it's nothing sinister behind no, it. No, no, no. These are, it's telling you, you know, they're freed yeah. people, they were formerly yeah. slaves, and now they're doing yeah. performances. So, um, obviously, if I'm wrong or offended anybody, I would hate to do that, but that's, that's, that's what history. I take from that's, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it also came to light that in 1873, the whole place had a, a makeover. So again, you're showing how it's gone from nearly closing down um, to actually getting a little bit more money spent on it. So Lockwood and Mawson were brought in again to do the upgrade. Um, I mean, it tells you a little bit about the decorations being executed in a more elaborate manner. So it's, it's up in its game. Um, Lockwood and Mawson, the architects, um, general character, the design is based on the Pompeius style and his objective would give the whole entirely different character from that of which it formerly possessed. So we're up in the game. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a turning point again where the money's coming in, let's give it a, a facelift. And 
what we have is uh, W.E. Foster or Forster, which yeah. uh, I think we all know Forster Square yeah. and the statue in Forster <coughs> Square, uh, which is a little bit hidden now, but uh, he was uh, uh, an education secretary, I believe. Uh, don't know my politics that well, but uh, he came here. What's interesting is his last ever public appearance was on this stage as well because uh, this is 1886 and just after he made his speech here he went away and whilst away he uh, he died right so he um, left for the continent uh, got a fever and he never recovered so it was the last time this place ever saw him and he ever saw this place um, we also had royalty visiting this uh, Gentlemen, the Shah of Persia, on his world tour in 1889, stopped off here in Bradford, and uh, obviously they made quite a, a big event of it, and uh, he came here. Um, they used to set this place out for functions as well, so you'd have tables set out um, with the head speakers maybe near the stage, things like that. But yeah, you. This gentleman, again, he came here a few years later, he was assassinated, I do believe. God, Shah of Persia, eh? Yeah. Who would have thought? Um, and now we're getting again to names that some people will know and some people won't, but uh, Mr. Henry Irving and Miss Ellen Terry in 1890 performed here. Uh, performance of Macbeth. Again, both very famous of their time. And um, Henry Irving is uh, famous for um, his uh, dramatic death at the Midland Hotel. He died after performing at the Theatre Royal on Manningham Lane. Um, but this is his early years. Um, and we have pictures of Henry Irving yeah. and Ellen Terry. So we're getting now, we're, these are performers coming from London. We're really up the game. Yeah. We're getting some big stars. Um, and Miss Ellen Terry continued well after, um, well after Henry Irving's death. Uh, as you can see in this picture, it's uh, about 1914, roughly. So there's now a, a change because we're getting to 1900. And there must be something happening with another decline or something because now they're looking at how can we make more money and then um, I've got some information here about the Thomas and Thomas Edison animated photo company movies what better way of bringing revenue in so it gradually started to become a cinema as well as a theatre concert concert hall, uh, meeting venue, it was it was taking all sorts of things on. Um, it says here there was a film of Joan of Arc and several spirited football pictures. So you could come and watch football. <laughs> it's always football, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, now we're seeing in 1908, new century pictures have started in investing and uh, a new programme of films, um, no performance on Saturday due to a concert. So you see it was, it was switching from one to the other all the time. We're then in we have another um, pantomime, Robinson Crusoe. Um, it's uh, the, uh, the, the wreck of the good ship, Shipley Independence and the savage savages of Wind Hill. <laughs> So, you might think you've never been here before, particularly if you live miles and miles away. But, I don't know if you remember, sort of, Saturday afternoons, uh, you'd watch St. and Greavesy, the football pundits, and then straight after, the wrestling was on. And, much loved by many grandmas throwing handbags at the wrestlers, uh, but it took place in this building. And, um, just to give you a reminder, uh, so what we've got, Saints and Gravesy, yeah, oh look, 135, 
wrestling at St George's Hall, Bradford. So anybody that watched that programme has been in this building. Yeah. Well, I confess, I was always here watching wrestling. <laughs> there you go, you see. So it's, it's something subconsciously, if you enjoyed that programme, you'd enjoyed this building because that's what it was yeah. at that time. So we're talking here, 1987. Uh, so yeah, it's, it came into everybody's TV at that time. And if you watched it, you, you've seen St George's yeah. Hall. I may not even have known. But if we come over here, now then, we've got some of the famous faces. Oh, I remember them all. <laughs> uh, and most famous, Big Daddy. Yeah. Who uh, was always fighting giant hit stacks. Who was always booed. Yeah. Uh, you got your uh, Kendo and Nakasaki, is it? Uh, Johnny Quango, Rollerball Rocco, uh, Cat Weasel, who were always really thin and throwing himself yeah. around, and Pat Patton. In 1909, people actually came. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but um, St. George's Hall this week, a film being shown of Mr. Wilbur Wright's aeroplane experiments. So the first flights. So people were interested, even across the pond, to see if the Wright brothers could actually fly. Right, okay. Um, so yeah, again, it's there. Um, on about, the um, plane is seen at work near at hand, an excellent view of the daring aeronaut's lofty evolutions. I think he only got about 10 foot in air, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it thrilled people. It, yeah. was, it was quite... It's the die-hard of his day. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was also concerns. I mean, you go into sort of 1926 and people are actually saying, hang on a minute, is it no longer a concert hall because of all these other things that's going on? Um, so in, in that time, you know, people were saying it's, th there's a crossover again. There's another change coming. Um, also, the films that we've been talking about, in 1909, New Century Films, you can actually hire a film. This is like Blockbuster, but in 1909. <laughs> Ahead of the time, yeah. Yeah. There was, um, it got to the point in 1935 where this place was up for sale. Uh, it was kind of losing its way a little bit, and um, the Gaumont British Film Corporation offered the building uh, for £45,000 to the corporation. So Bradford Corporation bought it. Uh, it was used as a cinema and that's why it was sold on because they wanted to make this back to a concert hall. Um, so that's how it came into the council's um, portfolio of buildings okay um, so what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to show you I know you've had a quick scan around here but um, as a concert venue this place has been visited by so many stars and to get the points over uh, you've got everybody from David Bowie perfect example um, You've got your Jules Holland with his band. Yeah. You've got quite a lot of interesting people. Uh, status quo, we all know status quo. Yeah. Um, we've got a bit of Phil Collins up there. Um, I'm guessing it's Phil Collins, maybe not Genesis. I don't know, it might be Genesis. Yeah. Um, Rolling Stones. Yeah, Rolling Stones. Um, not just at the New Vic, but obviously here as well. UB40. Oh, there we go, Genesis. So, yeah, it wasn't just from right. Collins, it's Genesis. Um, you, you're getting all these people that we all know and love, but actually, when you think of where the stage is, you're so up and close and personal to these people. Hey, bon Jovi, I never knew they yeah, came here. Bon Jovi. Yeah, well, you've got the Human League, and uh, looking through my. Squeeze, remember Squeeze? Yeah. Um, we've got uh, shockwaves. Make sure any loose ornaments you value are taken down from high shelves before next Tuesday night because Iron Maiden will be playing for <laughs> St George's Hall. And uh, 
I know Bruce Dickinson did um, a session, um, I don't know if it was about a year ago, it might be, but yeah, you know, they still remember these places, they've come back to them. Um, you've got Blondie. Blondie, yeah. I think that's Bradford's own television because you've got your rock bands. There's your, there's your ticket for Iron Maiden, there and there. Black Sabbath, Uriah Heep, UFO. Um, deep, I mean, deep this place was a proper metal heaven, really. White Snake, White Snake, Motorhead. Well, yeah, you've got White Snake poster at the top there. Um, Bradford, St George's Hall, there you go. Um, yeah, you've got uh, obviously lots of different uh, Asian concerts. You might recognise more than me, I think, some of these. Bangra concert. Bangra, yep. Divadi Mela. And there's, uh, for the Take That fans. All right, let's have a look. <laughs> we've got Take That, we've got Steps, and we've got Boyzone. Any Boyzone fans out there watching this? I'm sure there will be. At least it's in the right era. Yeah. Because we've gone now from being in the movies from the 1900s to some of the star performers that, um, you know, they've been here, people will have seen them. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting ones for me was um, we also had New Order and this, this one, a little known band called In Excess. In Excess. <laughs> uh, which the quiz to win some tickets was, uh, do In Excess come from A, Albania or B, Australia? <laughs> It's not rigged in any way, is it really? <laughs> so, um, um, I mean, look at the advert. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it's time. 1988, so in excess we're in here in 1988. Yeah. Um, also, there was a um, rock school national rock and pop competition that was held here. Now, you might see uh, Toya Wilcox and uh, I always get Mike, is it Mike Reed? Mike Reed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that uh, were hosting it, so it was actually on TV here, uh, but it was like a Battle of the Bands event. Uh, yeah, Mike Reed and Toya Wilcox, uh, they were judge, judges uh, this, this particular year and the year before. 350 groups from schools and colleges throughout Britain performed here with a prize of £11,000. Just so you can see here, um, these were donated uh, copies. We've got Roxy Music, Queen, of course we don't know who that is, <laughs> um, T-Rex. T-Rex, yeah. Um, for anybody that's into the ska music, we've got Madness, the Specials, Mungo Jerry, that's a Mungo name Jerry. I've heard of for a long time. Um, and back to the rock music, we've got Thin Lizzy. So, such a, a mix of artists that have performed here. And this is in modern times. This is where the wrestling took part. That Saturday afternoon broadcast, this is where it came from. Now, I'm stood in the centre of where the ring would have been, and yet it probably doesn't look the same because behind you, the stage is quite close now. Um, but I believe it can be adjusted. Now, the ring would have gone beyond where the stage is, so it was quite, quite big and it was so that people around the, around the balconies could see the full scope of what was going on. Right, this is the stage door and uh, hopefully somebody will let me in, but uh, no, there's nobody in. But while there's nobody here, let's go and have a look. We'll go and see what it's like to be a star. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go through here and through these double doors here. There we go. Now, dressing room. I need to get myself ready for my performance. Don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know if it'll be voice all right at the minute. But again, there's other dressing rooms downstairs as well. Yeah. 
Okay, so now, I've just been in there, I've got dressed up, I've got all my makeup on, I'm ready to go. Okay, so up the stairs. Looking great. Thank you very much. Make my mother proud. This is it now. Out there, there are thousands of people waiting for a decent performance. Can't, can't guarantee it, but we're going to go through. Let's go for it. Alright. I'm actually quite scared. Somebody that's come to perform and show everybody their talents, whether it's music, com comedians, and that's their view. A view that not many of us ever get to see. I don't know about you, it makes me nervous. Nervous when it's even empty. I know, I know. If you think of uh, thousands of faces looking back at you and you've got to entertain them for a couple of hours. Yeah, a bit like these videos, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're, we're on the stage and one thing that we've been talking about earlier, which you can't see, is St. George's Hall, uh, the organ. So hopefully, I mean, the light's great behind here, you can see the organ. Again, renovated uh, recently and the uh, Bradford coat of arms on the middle of it. Um, it's probably from the, uh, the renovation in the, the 50s. It's about that sort of uh, era, is that particular crest. Just while we remember, look at all the comedians that have been here. Past, present. I mean, uh, we've got Bill Bailey, Paul Chowdhury, um, Ben Elton, Sandy Toxvic, Harry Hill. In 1904, the Prince and Princess of Wales, uh, on their visit here um, into Bradford, visited here as well. Now, you might not be able to see it really, but that's what this area used to look like. See the grand staircase on the picture? Well, the grand staircase is no longer here, but it was in this area. Uh, again, so many changes over the years um, see this space open up and go further back but um, there would have been two window like archways above here but it's all gone now uh, and um, what they did was the actual venue that's what it looked like inside. They had all the uh, royal standards and uh, fancy sort of drapes and curtains for the royal visit. Right. Okay. That's an interesting feature. So yeah, what we've got here is actually uh, sort of a museum of history for the building compiled um, by St George's Hall and uh, there's a bit of all sorts here. I don't know if you can see that picture there is uh, the grand staircase that was, would have been just behind us. But you're getting a feel for uh, its life. It spanned so many years and seen so many people, so many stars of different eras, different times. Um, there we go, the royal visit. That's a uh, timetable for them coming. Prince and Princess of Wales. So I've just arrived at the Undercliff Cemetery to look at the resting place of this uh, great man who was uh, involved in the idea of the St George's Hall. And I've got him the house with me, who will introduce this uh, the grave. Yeah, welcome to the grave of the great Samuel Smith, uh, who was a brainchild of St George's Hall. Um, we can't really see much on the on the monument. The, uh, the lettering's fallen off and it's become worn, so I'm not even going to attempt to read it. But it's obviously a member of his family here. Um, it's a modest grave, but it's set amongst the greats of Bradford, and it has a lovely a lovely view across the parts of Bradford. You can see uh, there's a, a fairly large stone slab here. There will have been at some point raw iron railings here they've obviously gone now samuel smith was also he was the mayor of bradford from 1851 to 1854 
and he was also the president of the Coral Society of Bradford. Now, I have to say thank you to Samuel Smith for the St George's Hall and um, I'm sure for like yourselves, many out there have been to St George's Hall and uh, it's a wonderful place. And there you go, that was a quick history of St George's Hall in Bradford. And what a lovely place this cemetery is. The Undercliff Cemetery always brings me back. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and uh, I shall see you on the next vlog. Peace out.